The second flight of the Space Transportation System, or STS-2 mission, was designed to verify vehicle performance and to establish its safety and reliability prior to undertaking operational missions. The first cargo was carried aboard the orbiter on this mission, and the remote manipulator system was to be tested in Earth orbit by the astronaut crew. At an early morning breakfast on launch day, the two astronauts talked over final preparations for their five-day, 83 Earth orbit mission aboard the spaceship Columbia. Joseph Engel, a colonel in the United States Air Force, is commander of the STS-2 mission. Richard Truly, captain, United States Navy, is pilot for this second flight of the reusable orbiter spacecraft. As dawn broke over Kennedy Space Center, thousands of news media personnel from throughout the world assembled at the press site located three miles from the launch pad. Cameras, recorders, and communication equipment were checked and tested. At T minus two hours and five minutes, the countdown went into a scheduled hold and the astronauts began suiting up for their mission. This would be the first Earth orbital space flight for both men. Colonel Engel had previously piloted the X-15 aircraft into the fringes of space. Both men had participated as a team in the free flight approach and landing tests of the orbiter Enterprise in 1977. The countdown for the shuttle vehicle was conducted in firing room one of the Complex 39 Launch Control Center by a government industry team of about 200. The countdown was picked up after the astronauts arrived at the launch pad. The crew proceeded to the white room and began the orbiter ingress procedures. Several thousand invited guests arrived at the VIP viewing site located on the south side of the vehicle assembly building. Thousands of other visitors, primarily families and friends of Space Center workers, had converged on the other designated viewing sites at the spaceport. Several hundred thousand viewers crowded into every available site along the riversides, causeways, and seashore near Kennedy Space Center. In the launch control center, the consoles and computers of the automated processing system constantly checked every functional system aboard the space vehicle. As the countdown reached T minus nine minutes, the ground launch sequencer took over the countdown. The sequencer is a set of automated computer programs which perform the final series of launch events in a specified sequence. Under the program, the three orbiter engines were scheduled to ignite in sequence at T minus seven seconds and throttle up to 90% thrust in three seconds. At that point, the ignition sequence of the two solid fuel boosters was to begin. As the boosters ignited, eight hold down bolts were to be blown. Liftoff was scheduled for T zero. Several seconds into the flight, vehicle pitch over and a 180 degree roll program were scheduled to begin. As the countdown reached its final minutes, all was in readiness at Kennedy Space Center, Florida, Mission Control in Houston, Texas, and at tracking stations located throughout the world. All anxiously waited for the second launch of America's space shuttle. Within two minutes after liftoff, shuttle had reached an altitude of 25 miles. 
the solid rocket boosters were jettisoned and began their descent to the ocean. The boosters were recovered for reuse on a future shuttle mission. Several minutes later, the external fuel tank was jettisoned and the spaceship Columbia reached its designated orbital altitude. The second mission of America's reusable space transportation system was underway.